back if you want to take some home. There's a lot of websites in the movie that we're going to show on, on Friday will also portray this, that he was a mercy unto mankind. And he, again, you find that there's not uh, non-Muslim authors that describe Muhammad as the most influential person in history. Michael Hart, in his book, named him number one as the most influential person in history because he succeeded at the religious level and at the secular level. Secular level. We find that he, in five in uh, 670 Christian era, he was in a cave. He was meditating away from the evil, uh, the, the the ills of the society. People were worshiping idols at that time. People were were going around the uh, the Kaaba naked, and they were burying their daughters. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in his nature to be pure and to nature to find the truth, he would go out and meditate in the caves and the mountains outside of Mecca. So at one, one day, while he was meditating, an angel came to him, angel Gabriel came to him, and squeezed him, and told him to read. Muhammad was being surprised, and he was, he was being, uh, he was being, uh, you know, he, he was surprised, and he said, I don't know how to read, I'm not a reader, or what am I supposed to read? And then the angel repeated, read, read. And then um, Muhammad again, he replied, I do not know how to read. And then at the end, he gave him the first few verses of the Quran, the first few, um, uh, the first few words of God, the final words of God on this earth that read, read in the name of your Lord who created, created you man from alaq, created you man from a leech-like clot, a leech-like clot, which is the uh, the pre-fetus stage inside a womb, created man which he did not know, taught men which he did not know, and this th this started a series of revelations throughout a history about uh, 23 years that God was revealing this Quran, this holy book, this revelation, this word of God. This Quran was finalized at his death and is being mem it was memorized by thousands of people at his time and then it, it increased to generations later, millions of people. Now you can find billions and billions of people that have at least one chapter of this Word of God memorized in its original language, in the Arabic. The Arabic has been preserved since 1400 years and the classical Arabic, if one wants to learn the Quran in one, if you're either in America or you're either in Singapore or you're in Russia or you're in South Africa, the language of the Quran does not change. It is still in the classical Arabic, is still in the classical Arabic language that was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So again, I summarize uh, our presentation, the purpose of life, um, that we achieve success and salvation through six beliefs and five actions. Six beliefs and five actions. The six beliefs is that we believe that Allah is alone and He's one in worshipping Him, that He is one, that He, he cannot be divided, God cannot be divided into um, different, different, different deities. We believe that there is a creation called angels, which we cannot see. We believe in the books that were revealed unto Moses, the books that were, the book that was revealed unto Jesus. We believe on the books that were revealed, or the scriptures that were revealed unto Abraham, and we believe in the last and final revelation of Allah to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for all of His creation. We believe in the messengers. I've gone through all the messengers. We believe that all of them, all of them came, were messengers of Allah and we do not differentiate one from another. They all were men and that they all were messengers and prophets of Allah. We also believe there will be a resurrection day and a day of judgment. That everyone will be held accountable for everything that they did here and that they will be asked about everything that they did here. And we also believe in, believe in divine decree, the good of it and the bad of it. And we believe, um, so these are the six beliefs, Allah, angels, books, the messengers, and resurrection and day of judgment, and divine decree. And the seven, uh, the five actions that are required for success and salvation is that we testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, and we testify that Muhammad is his servant and his last messenger. We also um, establish prayer 
As Muslims pray five times a day, a series of bowing and prostrations and praising Allah and asking for His help and His guidance. This that Muslims do five times a day. There's a prayer pre-dawn, uh, there's, there's a prayer pre-sunrise, there's a prayer in the afternoon, there's a prayer um, mid-afternoon, there's a prayer during sunset, and there's a prayer during the night. Five daily prayers which are required from every Muslim. Every Muslim is also required to pay charity. There's a certain amount of wealth, a certain percentage that go from the rich to the poor. A certain amount of wealth that is put, it is a certain percentage that is taken off your wealth, given from the rich to the poor. We also have to make one pilgrimage to Mecca. We have to make a pilgrimage, a series of actions and, and praising and, and, and um, supplications we make to our Lord where we single Him out. We make a pilgrimage for His sake through the same steps of Abraham, the same steps of Ishmael in Mecca. And this has been narrated through our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the last and for a final action that we um, do is that we fast in the month of Ramadan, the, ma the lunar month, the Islamic month of Ramadan, where we, where we abstain from food, we abstain from drink, and we abstain from marital relations between sunrise and sunset. And this is done for a series of 30 days. And, and um, with this, I conclude that, um, uh, that there was a, there's a story behind this verse that a bunch of Christians, a bunch of Christians from Yemen came to the Messenger of Allah and they were asking him questions. What is Jesus? You know, uh, they, they, the, uh, the, there was like three opinions about Jesus at that time. There were three opinions about, uh, there were opinions about Mary. There were questions about Mary. So the people were asking Muhammad. Muhammad himself did not know. He was an unlearned, un illiterate prophet. He did not study the scriptures of Bibles or Torah uh, that predated him. He was unknown. So he said, wait and I'll get revelation from my Lord and then I will tell you. And then so in chapter, the third chapter of the Quran, there's 80 verses that were revealed to respond to the questions and concerns of those Christians. At the end of these verses is this statement that uh, Muhammad Sallallahu made. That, O oh, people of the scripture, O oh, 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 Jews and Christians, that come to a word that is just between us and you. That we worship none but Allah, the same. And that we associate no partners with Him. And that none of us shall take others as lords besides Allah. That if they turn away, so uh, uh, Rasulullah was commanded that if they turn away, say that bear witness and testify. He was asking those that were, that, that were with Him, the Christians, bear witness and testify that we at least submitted, that we at least became Muslims and submitted to worshiping and singling Him out for creation, uh, for singling Him out for worship.